Today, once again, we're reading some more terrifying Reddit stories and it's gonna be so fun. I hope you're having a good day today and I hope you're ready for this. And with that being said, enjoy guys. Would I be the a-hole if I refused to buy a tacky painting that my sister-in-law made for my family? My daughter and I love reading this together and now it's my turn to ask for some judgement. I'm 52 female and this situation concerns my husband's brother Drew, 59 male, and his wife of 5 years, Susan, 35 female. Drew supports Suzanne on his income while she focuses on her dream of being an artist. She makes paintings of people and animals and has a website where she advertises her work for sale. Privately, I don't think her art is very good. It's absolutely better than what I could do. It doesn't look professional if you know what I mean. My husband feels the same so we haven't opted to purchase any of her art despite her dropping hints about it. The art on her site is priced in the $3,000 to $5,000 range. I realise that labour and cost of materials must be taken into account but given the quality those prices seem outrageous to me. I suspect that she isn't making regular sales because she started making portraits of friends, family or pets as a surprise and usually said family and friends end up feeling obligated to buy the painting as a courtesy. Unfortunately my husband and I were the latest victims of this sales tactic. My son recently proposed to his girlfriend and we took the two of them his girlfriend's parents and our daughter out to a fancy dinner to celebrate both of my kids posted pictures from dinner on social media without telling anybody Suzanne decided to make a painting of one of these pictures of everybody smiling she revealed the big surprise at a party that she and Drew hosted two weeks ago the painting is a whopping 40 by 58 inch and I honestly think it's awful kitsch and tacky I told Suzanne that it was sweet of her to commemorate such a special moment in our family but I carefully avoided saying anything about liking it as I feared she kept on dropping hints during the party about how we can buy it as a wedding gift and she would be happy to give us a big discount off what she would charge somebody else. Who else would buy that painting though? I politely dodged these hints and she was disappointed. Over the weekend Drew reached out to my husband to say that Suzanne feels hurt that we never made an offer. He said that it's becoming obvious as the years go by that we've never purchased one of her pieces even though we have the means to do so and it would mean a lot to them if we did buy the painting. Her original asking price was two and a half grand and Drew said that he'll reduce it further to 1900. It's not not about the money, not entirely. It's the principle of it. I feel like I'm being strong-armed into paying for something that I never asked for and I don't like and I don't have the space for in my house. Yeah, that's because you are OP. I asked and my son and his fiance don't want it. My husband thinks that we should just buy it to keep the peace in the family and avoid a potential rift with Suzanne and Drew. He also says the way that I talk makes me sound like a snob even though I would never share these opinions with anybody I know but him. Would I be the a-hole if I stand my ground and refuse? No, I don't feel like it, OP and you are being strong-armed into something that you don't want. And what if you do pay 1900 for this painting now? Are you gonna have to buy like one every year or something? Before they go, oh, you know, you haven't bought a painting in a while? No, that's definitely not fair. You're not asking for it. So why should you feel like you have to buy it? No, it's such an a-hole move to make a painting that nobody even asked you for and expect them to pay two grand for it? Of course that's not fair. And what, you should buy a $2,000 painting to keep the peace? Nah. Like, talk about making an issue. I'm going to paint something that nobody asked me to make and I'm going to get upset if they don't pay me two grand for it. Well, you better get used to being upset then. Like, what the hell? The top comment says, not the a-hole. I'd simply ask her why she won't gift it to the happy couple and follow up asking, did she only make the painting so that she can make money and not for her nephew and his new fiance? You're definitely not wrong, but I'm petty and I'd make sure to turn this around on her. OP said, thank you for your judgment. I think that's a great idea. Though I know Suzanne's underlying issue is that she thinks that we don't like her art which is true and I'm afraid that she'll keep pushing until she either makes the sale or I give a firm no. Yeah like the comment under that says I mean it's a bad business to create something on prospect when it's that personal and specific to such a small group of people. If she was going to try to sell it then she should have been approaching the prospective buyers i.e. the people who went to that event whether they'd be interested in commissioning it. She can't be mad that there's no interest in buying an unsolicited product. Yeah definitely and on top of that a two and a half grand unsolicited product. The second top comment says not the a-hole my husband thinks we should just buy it to keep the peace in the family. Absolutely not. Do you know what will happen next? She'll do a painting of the wedding or any potential pregnancy announcements or any other milestones. Suzanne will not stop. After all, you are willing to buy one painting. Why not buy another and then another and another and another? And OP said, oh dear, truly my worst nightmare. But yeah, that'll definitely happen. Like, oh, it's been a little while since you've bought one of my paintings and she'll do the same thing again. Yeah, also this comment, not the a-hole. You did not commission the piece. She took it upon herself 
herself to make it, she can either gift it to the happy couple, attempt to sell it to a stranger, or repurpose the canvas for something different. No matter what parts she chooses, none of them require anything from you or your husband. Best wishes to your son and his fiance on their engagement. Yeah, that's so wild. You don't have to do anything, OP. Okay, I'm scared about the next one. Am I the a-hole for punching my stepdaughter after she played a prank on me that scared me? I know the title sounds bad, but please read. It's a throwaway account and also fake names. I, 38 male, married Judd, 44 female, a few months ago, and I acquired a stepdaughter, Abby, 14 female, as a result. I dated Judd when Abby was 8, met her parents when she was 9, and I married Judd when she was 10. I'd say that our relationship is okay. She doesn't act brady towards me and respects me enough as her mum's husband. However, there's one glaring issue about her, and that's her pranking nature. Abby loves to pull pranks. Some examples are her hiding my car keys with what look like a hundred dubs in a box. Like what, a hundred fake car keys or something. I found them pretty fast because she failed to notice that my keys have duct tape on them. Another one is when she hid in the fridge. Something I still find very weird to scare the first person who opened it. That can't even be safe, can it? Well, last Wednesday I arrived home and it seemed I was the only one there. Only my shoes were at the doorstep and I even called out Judd's and Abby's names and no answer. This is somewhat normal as Judd sometimes works late and Abby stays at school for extracurriculars. So I screwed around with my dog, a German Shepherd and Husky mix for anybody asking for a little bit and then I decided to go and relieve myself. When I got to the bathroom, I noticed that the window cabinet was open. I thought nothing of it at first and I unzipped my pants, but then I saw a shadow behind the shower curtains. I thought the worst and I immediately punched the figure behind the curtains. Oh no. Well, as everybody may have guessed from the title, it was Abby. She was making a prank video and I hadn't noticed that she'd propped her phone up on the bathroom cabinet with some cups. I'm not gonna lie, I did not hold back. I punched her as hard as I could. Her nose seemed broken. When I realized it, I flipped out and so did she. After maybe five minutes of freaking out, I drove her to urgent care and I informed Judd of the situation. Her nose was indeed broken and would need about six to 12 weeks of recovery. Abby won't talk to me and as for Judd, she thinks that my action may have been justified, but also thinks I should have approached with more caution, which she's refused to elaborate on. So am I the a-hole? Wow, that's so unfortunate, but are you the a-hole? No, I don't think so, OP. You acted like a lot of people would have acted. You thought there was an intruder in your house, in the bathroom when you're super vulnerable, of course that's going to be your first instinct. No, I don't think you're the a-hole. Like, yeah, it sucks and it's super unfortunate, but I feel like it's a really unfortunate case of like mess around and find out. Maybe don't prank somebody to this degree, you know? It wouldn't have even been that funny anyway. And also, she shouldn't be recording somebody in the bathroom anyway. Yeah, like this comment says, not the a-hole. What did she expect? That's a very natural reaction to a startle or a scare. Maybe she learnt a lesson. Also, filming in the bathroom? That's messed up. She can't do that. Film the wrong person and it's a felony. Yeah, like this comment says, you didn't know who you were punching. You had to protect yourself. It could have been an intruder waiting there. I hate these stupid pranks. Hopefully Abby learnt a lesson about not acting like a moron for TikTok. Yeah, like as unfortunate as it is, I don't feel like you're the a-hole OP. Also, I'm trying to imagine if I were Abby. I feel like if I was pranking somebody by being in their bathroom behind their shower curtain about to scare them and they punch me in the face really hard. Like, yeah, obviously you don't want a broken nose. I feel like at the same time I would have been like, well, I probably shouldn't have done that. There's a comment that says filming somebody in the bathroom is inexcusable. This one's a perfect example of mess around and find out. I hope she learnt her lesson, not the a-hole. And the comment under that said, yeah, if she was hiding behind a couch to spook somebody, I'd think it was relatively harmless. But in the bathroom, a 14-year-old knows better. Yeah, I don't think you're the a-hole OP. It's like a really unfortunate accident. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. The next one that we're going to read is called, Am I the a-hole for embarrassing my husband in front of the family and ruining his day? My husband and I have four kids combined. They are 14 year old boy, 11 year old girl, 8 year old boy and a 10 month old girl. Well, my 14 year old and my husband haven't gotten along recently. It started roughly last year when my son's biological father reached out to my son directly and told him that he wanted to meet him. He signed away all of his rights when he was born and never met him, but my son knew who he was and often looked up his Facebook page. My husband said no, that he could meet him when he was 18. I wasn't there for the conversation, but when I found out, it caused a huge blow up fight to the point of nearly divorcing because my husband had it in his head that I didn't respect him and apparently neither did my son. To be fair to him here, my son's father is not a good person. He's an alcoholic who consistently gets his license revoked for failure to pay child support and driving while intoxicated. So due to this, my husband told my son that he wasn't allowed to meet his father until he was an adult. But the issue was that he made this decision without me. I would have arranged for a meetup in a public place at least because my son does want to meet him. Regardless, my son's father backed out, stopped responding to messages. So in the end, he made the decision for everybody. But my 
son still has it held against my husband understandably. The relationship has never been the same. We are all in therapy now. On to the issue though. My son took off for all boys summer camp mid-June. It's three hours away and my father owns it. He allows my son to work for him or just chill at the camp. He's been doing it for years. I didn't see my son at all until two days ago when camp let out. My entire family arranged to meet up at the amusement park to welcome my son and my father back home. As soon as my son got out of my dad's car, he immediately ran to my vehicle and said, Where's my baby? My husband snapped and said, Don't call her your baby, that's weird. My son asked how it was weird and he said, Because she's my baby, don't be weird. I guess I saw red in this moment because like his youngest son, eight, his daughter, eleven, even his mum, they all call our daughter their baby and he never says anything. So in front of everybody, in my defence I wasn't thinking about that, I said, I'd argue that you're the one being weird here, as well as inappropriate because you're insinuating that it's being said that I had a child with my oldest child. His face immediately went beet red and he said, that's not what I meant at all. So I asked him what he meant then, because he never says anything to anybody else when they call his baby their baby. And I said that if it's weird that my son says it, then it's also weird when the women in his family say it too. He didn't say anything, so I laid out a final, don't be inappropriate towards the dynamics with my children again. He didn't end up going to the amusement park. He sat in the car. He was silent the entire ride home. When we got home, he said that I embarrassed him on purpose to be vindictive, that he wasn't being inappropriate at all by telling my son to stop saying that it was his baby. I beg to differ and I don't feel bad for embarrassing him either because he very clearly had it in his head that my son was insinuating that he, I don't know, had a baby with me or else he never would have made a comment like that to my child. All the while never telling his family to stop or that it's weird when they say it. Am I the gay hole? He expects me to apologize and I've told him that it isn't happening. Yeah, like the top comment said, your husband only takes issue with your son using the term my baby while he allows other family members to do so without comment. This creates a clear double standard and suggests that his issue is with your son specifically, not the term itself. While it might have been better to address the situation in private, your husband's behaviour in the moment warranted a response. He embarrassed your son publicly and it was natural for you to defend him. Yeah, that's a good point. He's saying that OP embarrassed him in front of everybody, but it's okay for him to try to embarrass OP's son in front of everybody. Yeah, that's not cool. Yeah, like this comment says too, not the a-hole. You should definitely discuss this during family counselling. To me, it seems like your husband was completely fine embarrassing your son in front of the family and ruining his day, literally his day where you were welcoming him home. The day wasn't about your husband. He seems to have an issue with your son and is trying to exert his authority by being overbearing. He needs to let up. Your son's going through enough with his biological father already. It'd be much better if your husband were there to support your son as he tries to navigate a relationship with his father instead of trying to prevent it altogether. And without even discussing it with you, I couldn't imagine making that kind of proclamation about our kid's life without even discussing it with my wife first. It's got nothing to do with being a step-parent versus a biological parent, but everything to do with being a co-parent. And OP said that was where I stood with that as well. I was so bothered that he made such an important life-changing decision for my son without discussing anything with me at all. He knows that my son wants to meet his father. He's known for the past six years. In his defense, his father is definitely not a good person by any means, but that, in my opinion, is something that my son should figure out on his own. My husband holds a completely different tune on the situation, claiming that he's protecting my son, but made the mistake of having a few beers one night after the fact and admitting that he just doesn't want to deal with a baby daddy. He has attempted to work through those issues in therapy, both family and personal. But to be blunt, my son isn't receptive and I can't say that I blame him. There's also a comment here that says, not the a-hole. Your husband's comment was inappropriate and you were right to defend your son. It is important to address this issue with your husband. He needs to understand why his comment was hurtful and inappropriate. And he also needs to apologize to both you and your son. It seems like there are underlying tensions in your relationship, particularly between your husband and your son. And these need to be addressed through therapy or open communication. And then also there are comments like this one. I mean, your husband is right. He was trying to protect your son from dealing with an abusive alcoholic. You both should have talked that over in private. But yeah, OP's husband shouldn't have told OP's son that he wasn't allowed to meet his father until he was an adult and make that entire decision without OP. That's not right. And yeah, I don't feel like you're the a-hole for pointing out the double standard that your husband was showing. It's a hard one though, but in that situation, I don't think you're the a-hole. But yeah, definitely feels like there's a lot of tension here. The next one that we're going to read is on the Entitled People subreddit. Karen tries to bypass airport security and is sent to the end of the line. So this happened a few days ago at the airport in Seattle. My family and I were waiting for our boarding pass to get scanned when one of the women working for TSA stopped a lady, who I assume either went past the ropes or walked away from the line without getting her boarding pass scanned. The woman who went past the ropes, who looked no older than 25, looked confused or at least pretended to, and said that she already scanned her boarding pass with a guy halfway across where TSA was scanning the boarding passes. Another woman walked over to the guy who allegedly 
scanned her boarding pass and asked him if he did. He said no. The Karen continued her act so they sent her to the back of the line to get her boarding pass scanned. I know this one's a short story but I thought it was humorous and I had to share. Thank you for reading. Yeah, 100% the top comment. Karma is good. Even a little is heartwarming. We're back on MIT Gay Hole for the next one. MIT Gay Hole, my partner offered another woman food from our share plate while on a date. My partner male 30 and I female 30 were on the first date that we've had in about a year due to financial struggles. I'd really miss spending quality time with him but I knew that I had to be patient and keep working hard to pay our bills. We finally got on top of everything and had a really good week so he offered to take us out. We had a great night, visited a nice bar, played at the arcade and then went for some food. At this point he asked me to go 50-50 on paying for the meal because again money is tight. I didn't mind I was enjoying our time together. The share plate that we ordered was brought out to us and I asked my partner to grab some condiments from the front. While he was gone a woman came in from the street and started to ask if she could have some of our food. She didn't look homeless. She had tattoos all over her face and a casual outfit. This is where I start to feel like an a-hole. I shook my head no. I felt a bit uncomfortable and I didn't want to be in the situation where a stranger is asking me for food while I'm sitting alone at a table. My partner came back and I was trying to catch his eye and show him that I was uncomfortable and that I was shaking my head no. He didn't look at me. He listened to the woman's request and immediately said yes of course. Ethan went to the counter to grab a takeaway box and picked up the plate and offered her to take whatever she wanted. I felt really frozen and shocked. The woman said about me, oh she doesn't look too happy. While putting her finger on the part of the meal that I ordered, she didn't take it and said to my partner, oh I better just take something from your side instead. He stood there silently obliging, waiting for her to take what she wanted. She looked at me one last time and my face obviously looked unhappy and displeased. She commented on my facial expression, wow you look angry, and left with her takeaway box. I didn't feel like eating at all after that. My partner was genuinely confused, thinking that he was impressing me by doing a kind deed, but I felt disrespected by both of them and my appetite had gone. I also felt like a huge a-hole not wanting to share my food with a hungry stranger when my partner is so willing to do it. His reason is that he's been in that situation before. I would argue that we don't know the woman's situation. I felt like everybody in the store was judging me and I desperately wanted to leave. We grabbed a takeaway box and started walking to my car. My partner was very upset and just walked in front of me the whole time. I felt ashamed and that I didn't deserve any of the food, so I asked if we could just give it to a homeless person, which we did. My partner walked off really fast without me and I called up to him at the car five minutes after. He was super angry at me, saying that he'd been in that situation before and why couldn't I just understand? I just started crying and saying that I felt horrible. He calmed down and when I tried to talk about how his actions upset me, that he didn't look at me and that he was so open with this stranger and that it made me feel invisible and disregarded, he said it was extremely difficult to understand me. Am I the gay hole? There's an update in the comments. Update, it is a real story. It was in a small pizza shop. We didn't have a fancy date at a proper restaurant because we don't have a lot of spare cash. So no waiters or waitresses or anything like that. The only staff are behind the counter. By fingering my food, I meant that she had a grip on my pizza crust and held onto it for a few moments while looking at me shaking my head before turning to my partner to say, I'll just take some of yours instead. My partner's first language is not English and he didn't really pay attention to what she was saying. I'm really hurt, angry and upset by what happened and the fact that he's unapologetic about it now too. I'm really unhappy. I don't like him anymore and I do want to leave the relationship. We have a rental together and the lease doesn't expire until next year and we have a partner visa together. If we separate, he will have to return to his home country. Edit, I totally agree with everybody saying that he could have bought her something for herself and I did think of that too late. I do feel bad about myself for letting it happen. I struggle with anxiety and especially in social situations, so I froze up. I do care about him as a person and I believe that he has a good heart, but this type of behavior where he fails to account for my feelings has caused a lot of issues in the past. We will navigate our way towards an amicable ending, but for now we have a few things that are keeping us tied together. Oh, that sucks OP. I don't feel like you're the gay hole. There's a comment that says, not the gay hole, she was touching your food. And the comment under that says, and then taunted her, and her husband is mad at OP. And the comment under that says, I'm confused as to why OP's partner thinks that he was impressing her. Like I already said, no dude, why would I be impressed that you steamrolled right over me? Even if he didn't know that she said no, it's still not impressive of him to give away the shared food that they can barely afford without her consent? Yeah, definitely. And you're not the a-hole, OP. And all the best with everything, OP. That's enough for today. That was such a fun episode. I do have something wholesome to show you guys before I go. We have to end the episode on a good note. I started karate today. I stood next to a five-year-old little girl on her first day. We learned the same steps and the dojo kun closing. I'm 10 times her size. Seen horrors in my years that I hope she'll never even imagine. In that moment, we're equal. Never felt such a gracious humility before. Oh, that's so beautiful. And yeah, I guess that is the thing about martial arts, isn't it? You're standing next to a five-year-old girl. You're 10 times her size and you've seen horrors in your life. But the two of you are starting at the same time. That's
that's so beautiful. And hell yeah, keep up the good work with the karate. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a wonderful time today. And if you did, make sure you let me know down below and like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And the comment of the day today, da 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 da, goes to Silver Starlight. There's a small cat in the background. Loveliest thing I've seen all day. Yeah, the Minecraft cats are so cute, aren't they? I'm loving the Minecraft backgrounds and I'm so happy that you guys are too. It gives the episode a sort of cozy vibe, I feel like. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!